Hi everybody, welcome to season three of Developer's Edge. So excited to have you back. My name's Chuck Friedman, I host Developer's Edge, and I'm happy to welcome our video producer, Addison Snydel, to help me introduce our guests and talk about what's so special about some of these episodes. Addison, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, this season is gonna be a good one. We now are branching out from interviewing people from our own company, and the main theme is enabling developers which is a really exciting topic. Yeah, and I'm excited to talk about our first guest, Dan Butchko. I go way back with Dan. Um, he's been there in some really exciting moments for me in my career and some actual really neat opportunities with my family at certain gaming events. He's super passionate about the gaming space and enabling developers, so really cool conversation. You know what I love about this interview? Uh, Dan is the embodiment of do what you love. I mean, his company, Playcrafting, is all about building games and experiences, um, which I think is very fascinating. Uh, he's a gamer, like me, like a lot of my friends, and they all started out gaming when they were young, and that gave them interest in programming and how things work. And so I really love to see it when people are in their field doing exactly what they love, but turning it into something better. I'm so excited to have Dan Butchko as our first guest on Developer's Edge Season 3. Let's go to the episode. We're very excited today to welcome our guest Dan Butchko, who is CEO and founder of Playcrafting. Dan, I've known you for a while, a very inspiring individual for me, as well as many others across your community. Thank you so much for being here today. So good to see you, Chuck. I'm really, really happy to be here too. So what is Playcrafting and who are some of the companies and communities you work with? We at Playcrafting are a company that works with developers around the world and with brands around the world to build games and experiences that would not have otherwise been possible. You can kind of think of us as an agency sort of model with a huge network of game developers sort of appended onto us. Um, we build games for emerging technologies. We build games with and for brands that are looking to infuse their brand into the content of the game. Um, and most importantly, we do this alongside that big network of developers. So we are a, a funding arm for developers to do what they love, to do what they do best, and for uh, brands to reach their consumers or reach new consumers in exciting new ways that really leverages the power of games. Do you see something particularly in gaming as the the right way to be able to highlight other other people's creativity or, or passion for what they do? Yeah, I think because games are experiences, they are interactive experiences um, in a, a very specific way that is unique to games unlike other forms of media or entertainment, um, developers can really infuse their own personal um, perspectives, their own personal stories, their own personal interests into um, games and the content around games. And therefore the games become this sort of direct reflection of the people who made them. How do you pull from all aspects of the community to attract such a diverse and talented group to your programs? I think first and foremost, the, the tools themselves have evolved to a place where the barrier for entry in just making games in general is lower than it ever has been before. Um, so even without uh, a company like Playcrafting or community allies and leaders, um, it's easier than ever for an artist, for example, to go online, download Unity, dabble a little bit, get something going relatively quickly, whether it's Unity, Unreal, or any other number of, um, of game engines or tools that are out there. Um, something that I personally just really love about what we do is that we, we like to think outside the box and we're often working with partners and clients and, and folks that aren't typically associated with gaming. And the only way I see for us to make sure we are really speaking to them, their needs, um, their consumers, folks that are engaging with them separately from us, is to make sure that the folks that are actually building the games are diverse in their backgrounds, diverse in, in their skill sets. 
I think it's those unique perspectives and those unique skill sets coming together that that collaboration, those forced moments of challenge and contention that really breed games that are more engaging and immersive and can captivate and connect with a wider audience in the end. Um, and on top of that, I just really love bringing people together and finding ways to um, connect people that would not usually interact in the world outside of us. Um, so when you bring those th those couple of things together, it really is, is just a proving point for collaboration and diversity of background is really um, powering uh, the immersion behind games in general. How do you ensure that the opportunities that you're bringing your developers and creators in your community stays genuine? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, before we do any uh, any um, client opportunities or, or sign them on, we make sure that we are incorporating direct and indirect developer input and feedback in that process. Um, we're regularly surveying our developers on the trends in the industry that are most exciting to them, brands that are making big waves, um, emerging technologies, failing technologies. So. We're considering that in anything and everything that we do. We also have five core commitments that Playcrafting um, is it's sort of at the foundation of everything that Playcrafting does. And one of those is to make sure that any opportunities that we pursue are in, in alignment with the values that are um, reflected in the developers that are in our network. Um, what does that mean in practice? It means uh, when a new uh, opportunity comes knocking at our door, we have an internal team meeting. We're talking about, um, you know, where is this uh, this brand at? Where is this technology at? Are they far enough along that it makes sense for us to put this in front of developers? Um, is the documentation there? Like, there's the nitty gritty stuff, and then there's also, um, you know, if there's a hot button issue that's attached to it. Um, one really good example of that would be NFTs and Web three and crypto. These are all things that you know, are super, super popular right now and are buzzwords, um, not very proven. And also um, NFTs have been um, negatively regarded by a lot of developers in the industry because um, it can be very manipulative. It can be very exploitative um, to and to build something and then have it just kind of out there replicated and, and not regulated. I'd love to hear from you, like in the past three months, what is something that you've seen in games? It could be a specific developer, a specific game, a technology that has you extremely excited. I would say that, especially during COVID, um, virtual reality kind of getting to a point where my now 11 year old is interested, not just as a way to escape, or to try something new and immersive, but to connect with friends. And to be able to do that, I'm, I can't say exactly what games, there's a, a range that, that he's taken up on uh, with, uh, with the uh, Quest 2 that we have, um, that we're fortunate to have, but it's really cool seeing him kind of go off in a world with other friends and be able to play something and know that where he couldn't be in the same room with them or in the same space, he's still able to do something kind of together. Um, and that's been, that's been cool. So I see a lot of potential with that even, even um, as people get healthier and start to congregate more. That definitely showed me and I think a lot of us that there's potential there. Well, Dan, I wanna thank you so much for your time being on Developer's Edge and having this conversation with me. We touched upon a lot of what I love about you and what you do and the communities you work with and enable. Thank you so much and it's always awesome to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining us today on Developer's Edge. If you like the conversation, be sure to subscribe and check out our other series. For additional content, tune in to the Developer's Edge podcast available on Google, Spotify, and Apple. Until next time, take care and we'll talk again soon.